All right. Hey, Shalom. First and foremost, I'm going to give all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. And a sincere peace and salutation to all you hope for the let Akim out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai has created us to do. So he can wake up and seal the elect of the nation of Israel, which consists of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and you Israelites who are scattered amongst the heathen nations that may look like the heathen nations, but your father's seed line of your lineage goes back to you being a so-called black, Hispanic, or Native American, one of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Hey, Shalom. It's your brother Halaki from the GMS Denver camp coming back once again through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah with another lesson. And the title of this lesson is going to be The Throne of David is a Government that Will Reign in Righteousness. You see, the Throne of David is a Government that Will Reign in Righteousness. And this is what the Almighty God, Yahweh, is sending His only begotten Son, Yahweh, shot back to establish in the earth. The Throne of David, a kingdom that will indwell of righteousness. And we're putting the word on notice of what's about to take place. Because you have heathen nations in the earth thinking that they're going to be the next superpower to come into rulership. And that's not the case. The next kingdom that's about to be established on this planet earth is going to be the kingdom of the nation of Israel. And yes, it's going to be repetitive. We only got a few more prophecies that need to come to pass, which includes what? Jacob's trouble. Uh, the MOTB. Uh, the, ga the gathering and salvation of the, the remnant of the nation of Israel at the second coming of our Lord Yahweh Shai. And the nuclear destruction. You see? There's really not too many things that else we need to prophesy about. You see? And after that nuclear destruction takes place, the, hey, the kingdom of heaven is going to be established once the elect come down out of heaven, as it tells you in the book of Revelation 21. But we're here to put you up on notice of what the Most High intends to do according to his will, man. And he's about to establish a kingdom where indwell of righteousness ruled, regulated, and governed by Yahweh Shai and the 144,000. That's about to be established in the earth after the destruction of Esau's uh, after the destruction of Esau's power structure. You see? So this is Amos 3 and 7. It says, Surely the Lord power will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets unto his servant the prophets. You see? The Most High revealeth his secret, his will, what he intends to do on the earth, Unto his prophets and this and the prophets are set up to come and tell the world what is going to be according to what the most High has spoken man you see and that's what's being done all these different events you take, see taking place in the earth uh civil unrest here in the land of america uproars of the people all throughout the world world war three ramping up so forth and so a hey, the, the 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 global elite are ushering the people into a digital system that's going to be based and founded upon the motb all that leads up to more prophecy coming to pass, which is going to ultimately lead up to what? The second coming of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, and the establishment of the kingdom of heaven, as it is written. And we're letting you know what's about to take place. <laughs> and that's all it is, man. The kingdom of heaven is going to be a kingdom, you see, governed and ruled in righteousness. Because what does it tell us that we're waiting for? So why not Revelation? Second Peter 3. And 13 says what? Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth where in dwell of righteousness. And when is this going to be established? Once the remnant come down out of heaven, after, after we're saved, Lord willing, we be a part of that number. After we're saved, we're going to come down out of heaven, as it tells us in the book of Revelation 21, and establish a new heaven and a new earth, a new rulership, a new government, the everlasting government, man. After what? After Esau's empire falls, which is the end of the heathen age on the earth, as it tells us. In 2nd Ezra 6 and 7, it says, Then answered I and said, What shall be the, the pardon of Sunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first? You see, this, this heathen age that we're still in right now, that's going to be ended with Esau, as we're going to read. And the beginning of that 
in the beginning of it that follow of which is what the kingdom of heaven you see ushered in by our Lord Yahweh Shah according to biblical prophecy and all the righteous men of the Lord have been longing for this day have been calling unto the almighty God Yahweh for this day and it's about and it's on hey it's at the doors man it says what verse 8 and he said unto me from Abraham unto Isaac when Jacob and Esau were born of him Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau for Esau is the end of the world or age the heathen age right it ends with the so called white race being in power this is how we know that the people who are ruling the earth right now are the Edomites we see all the signs of the times letting us know that the second coming of our Lord Yahweh Shai is, is, is uh, basically at the doors you see what World War 3 being one of those signs the MOTB being one of those signs signs in the, in the sun and the moon so forth and so on it lets us know that the kingdom of heaven is about to be ushered in it ends with the so-called white race being in rulership man this is when Yahweh Shai is going to return to dismantle everything that Esau has set up and that ends the age of the heathen ruling on the earth and after, after this final heathen empire falls no heathen nation will come into power ever again we're going to show you according to prophecy man second edge 6 and 9 says what for esau is the end of the world and jacob is the beginning of it that followeth and esau being the end of the world entails what america being completely destroyed and decimated to never be inhabited again by way of nuclear fire in the midst of world war three the land of israel being burned up to be purified and you heathen nations are going to be rebuilt it and that's going to be the righteous headquarters of the kingdom of heaven and righteousness is going to be put forth all throughout the earth and, and to the farthest reaches of the universe the righteous way is going to be established man that's that new heaven and that new earth that's going to be set up after esau's empire falls that's what's coming this is what the one you ignorantly this is who the one you ignorantly call Jesus Christ is coming to do. He's coming to set all of this up according to the Almighty's will, man. So when we go back, it says what? Nevertheless, 2 Peter 3 and 13, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, according to what the Most High has spoken and told his people he's gonna do through his prophets, right? We look uh look for Look for new heavens and a new earth where in dwelleth righteousness. And that's what's coming. Let's jump to the second, uh, I'm sorry, Revelation chapter 21. In verse 1, the new heaven and the new earth. You see that? And when you go through prophecy, the Most High is telling you all throughout prophecy, this is what he's going to establish when he sends his son, Yahweh Shabbat. The throne of David. A government of righteousness. You see? That's the new heaven and the, and the new earth. This is what Yahweh Shai is coming to usher in, man. So Revelation 21 and 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. That's the kingdom of heaven being established. The new, the, uh, the righteous way being established in the earth, right? For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And that goes into what? This current age that we're living in right now. It's about to pass away and it ends with Esau. We just read it in 2nd Ezra 6. Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. This is how we know who's in power. Because when Esau falls, Jacob is coming into power directly after that. Ain't going to be no Russian nation standing up as the next superpower on the earth. Or the Chinese or whoever else think they're coming into power. No, the Israelites are coming into power after Esau falls. And it's all in line uh, according to prophecy, according to what the Most High has spoken. You see? This is what it is. So everything you see around you now, this current structure, this government we, we see around us now, is going to be completely dismantled with all these different prophetic events that's going to take place. You see, especially that nuclear... <laughs> That nuclear destruction that's gonna that's coming that's gonna uh, really shake everything up, literally, man. This is what's coming, 
right? And the most I told us this all throughout prophecy. And we can go all the way back to the book of Numbers. Well, the Most High has told us this, man. It says what? Yep. Numbers 24 and 15, it says, And he took up his parable and said, Balaam the son of Beor have said, And the man whose eyes were opened have said, He have said, which heard the words of the Most High, And knew the knowledge of the Most High, Which saw the vision of the Almighty falling into a trance, But having his eyes open. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not now. That's a scripture for reincarnation. Balaam has been reincarnated, and he's here somewhere in the earth, waiting for the second coming of our Lord, Yahweh Shah. That's what he was prophes prophesying about. You see? There shall come a star out of Jacob, which is our Lord, Yahweh Shah, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. Why? Because Yahweh Shah is coming to establish the throne of David on the earth according to what the Most High has promised. You see? All these things, are, all these prophecies are things the Most High has promised to do, and He's going to uphold it. Because the Most High's word does not go out void. See, now man here on the earth, beginning with these pagan Christians, they would want you to believe that the Most High just said, you know what? Fuck all those things I said. That don't matter no more. I'm gonna just I'm gonna just flip the whole script and, and, and uh you know we're gonna we're gonna do something different. No man. The most I tells you that he doesn't change. Malachi 3 and 6. The most I tells you that his word does not go out void. The most I has told you that he's gonna uh do exactly what he's uh planned to do from the beginning. The the end has been declared from the beginning, man, and those and those things are coming to pass. This is why the, the 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 true narrative of the scriptures is so constant. You see, it's always repeated because what? The plan has already been laid out of what the Most High intends to do. And it, and it doesn't change. This is why you hear the prophets speaking on the same things over and over again. This is why you hear us as the prophets reincarnated speaking the same things over and over and over again. Why? Because the end has already been declared from the beginning. This whole... Thing known as human history has been ordained to play out according to the Most High's will from the beginning, man, and it will not change. Everything the Most High has spoken is coming to pass right before your eyes, whether you believe it or not. As Romans 3 and 3 tells you, what if some did not believe? That don't mean a damn thing to the Most High because he's still going to bring everything he said he was going to do to pass. Real quick, Isaiah 46 Starting at verse 8, it says what? Remember this and show yourselves men. Bring it again to mind, O ye transgressors. Remember the former things of old, for I am the Most High and there is none else. I am the Most High and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. And this is what you're witnessing play out right around you. Everything the Most High intended to do from the beginning is playing out right around you. Human history is nothing but biblical prophecy playing out. That's all it is. Human history is nothing but the will of the Most High playing out right around you. Your entire existence in each and every one of your reincarnations has already been ordained to come to pass according to the Most High's will. And you are doing exactly what he wants you to do. You're not doing anything of your own. Nothing in the earth is happening by coincidence. <laughs> the Most High, he set it up to play out how he wanted to play out. And he hit the play button, man. Now everything is rolling according to what the Most High intended from the beginning. That includes all the major empires that have been erected, you see, and dismantled. That includes all of our captivities as a people. All the curses that we're under. Everything that we go through in our daily life has already been ordained to come to pass according to the Most High's will. All these different wars on the earth, all according to the Most High's will. This is the Most High's movie playing out right around you. And everyone is subject to it. So, according to the Most High's movie, according to the Most High's script, 
the next kingdom to be established in the earth is the kingdom of heaven, the righteous kingdom. You see, and our Lord Yahweh Shai is going to spearhead that into existence. Numbers 24 and 17, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not now. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Sheth. We're going to put you heathen nations into into subjection, because that's what the king, that's what the uh, throne of David consists of. The Israelites being in rulership as the supreme rulers of the earth, and you heathen nations being put into subjection under the Israelites. That's what's, that's what's happening. That's what everything that you see happening around you is leading to. The most I putting his people back in power to rule the earth in righteousness forevermore. You see, with his son Yahweh Shai at the head of that. You see? Verse 18 says, What an Edom shall be a possession. Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies. And Israel shall do valiantly. Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion. And shall destroy him that remaineth for the city. Who is him that's going to have dominion out of Jacob? Yahweh Shai. And when we jump to the book of Luke. So this is what we do. We read precept upon precept, right? You, like Yahweh Shai says what? You pull from your old treasures and from the new. Because the, everything that was taught in the New Testament was based and founded upon what was written in the old. It all goes hand in hand. And when you read it with the proper understanding through the Holy Spirit, everything adds up. There's no contradictions anywhere in this Holy Bible, man. The contradiction comes when you take a false doctrine, you see, that's being propagated by the pagan Roman Catholic Christian Church and try to add it onto what the scriptures actually say. And it doesn't add up. Because the Roman, the pagan Roman Christian Catholic Church is telling nothing but fucking lies, man. This is why you people look at us strange when you hear the true doctrine of the Bible, what the Bible is actually talking about. Now, when you go here to Luke 1 and 31, we'll start at 30. Luke 1 and 30, it says, And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with the Most High. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Yahweh Shah. He shall be great, and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord power shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Why was this being said? Why was, why was this being uh, uh, relayed to the, uh, the mother of our Lord Yahweh Shah? Because it all goes back to what was prophesied, what was spoken through the mouth of the prophets. Let's see <laughs> what the cross reference is. Let's see if it takes us back to some. Does it? Yes, it does. Here we go. Second Samuel 7. <laughs> we'll start at uh, 12. It says what? Now, this is the prophet Nathan giving a prophecy unto our forefather David. Right? Now, it goes on to say what? Second Samuel 7 and 12. And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. Once again, this goes into reincarnation because it's talking about the two carnate, the uh, the two times Yahweh Shah was reincarnated on the earth. First as King Solomon, then later as Yahweh Shah. Now listen, verse thirteen says, "What he shall build a house for my name." That was done through who? King Solomon, right? And I will establish his throne. I'm just not, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Now we understand and know that King Solomon only reigned for 40 years. The everlasting throne, you see, the everlasting kingdom is going to be established through who? The Lord Yahweh Shah. You see, this spirit that came as King Solomon and later as Yahweh Shah is the same spirit, right? You see? That's that's more proof of reincarnation. King Solomon built the temple for the Most High's name, and the everlasting throne is going to be established, established through our Lord Yahweh Shai. It's the same spirit, just different reincarnations. Verse 14 says what? I will be his father, and he shall be my son, 
If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men. We understand and know, according to what's written, King Solomon died in peace after reigning over uh, uh, Israel for 40 years. This was going to be fulfilled. This portion of the prophecy is going to be was fulfilled to who? Our Lord Yahweh Shah. You see? And of the stripes of men, and of the stripes of children of men. You see? Verse 15 says what? But my mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took him from Saul, who I put away from before thee. And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. According to all these words and according to all this vision, so did Nathan speak unto David. So the everlasting throne, the everlasting kingdom is going to be established through the one the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, whose true name is Yahweh Shah. What is he coming to establish? The throne of David. You see, the everlasting righteous kingdom that will that shall never end. That's what's about to be established next in the earth after Esau's empire falls. A kingdom will endure of righteousness, a new heaven and a new earth where the righteous way is going to be propagated all throughout this planet earth. You see? This is what's coming. Let's get another one. Let's get more prophecy. We can go into Daniel chapter 2. And we'll start at verse 44. Yup, the divine kingdom, right? Now this, this account goes into the... <laughs> look at that. Showing you that the Bible is, is, is completely accurate, man. Because this goes into the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had. And Daniel had to break it down through the Holy Spirit for him. You see? And the kingdom was in, uh, was about what? Four major empires that were going to be established in the earth. We ain't got to read it. The headlines tell you what it is. The interpretation. Babylon, the first kingdom. Then it follows with what? The medial Persian. The medial Persian and the Greek empires. Then the Roman Empire. Then the, revival, the revival of the Roman Empire. You see? Which we're living in now. The ten toes part iron part miry clay. This is the portion of the statue we're in right now. The ten toes part iron, part miry clay. You see? Having the strength and the military might as the Roman Empire. But them not meshing together as we're seeing. NATO was crumbling. The EU was crumbling. <laughs> you see? They're not on one accord, man. This is the portion of the statue that we're in right now. And, the, and what happens in the midst of this empire that we're in right now? The divine kingdom. Is going to be erected. Verse 44 says what? And in the days of these kings. Shall the most high. Or shall the power of heaven. Which is the almighty God Yahweh. Set up a kingdom. Which shall never be destroyed. You see that? What kingdom is that? It's the kingdom of our Lord Yahweh Shah. That righteous kingdom. That's coming after this one. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. Why? Because the kingdom of heaven is for the Israelites. It's the rest that the Most High is going to finally bring us into according to what he's promised unto our forefathers. That's what the kingdom of heaven is all about. It's, it's the rest for the Israelites. The everlasting rest. That's why it shall not be left to other people because it's, it's solely for the Israelites to rule in. And for you heathen nations to be in subjection under us as it was during the time of King David. This is what the one you ignorantly call Jesus Christ, or who the one, the, uh, yeah, who the one you, the one you ignorantly call Jesus Christ is coming to establish, man. He's coming to set his people back up as the supreme nation on the earth, and all of you nations will be subject unto us, as it is written, according to the Most High's will. Daniel 2 and 44. In the days of these kings shall the most high, shall the power of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. We just read, did we not just read that in Luke? Or what the, the Lord Yahweh Shah is coming to do? According to the prophecy that Nathan gave unto King David. It's being reiterated here in Daniel 2, showing you it all goes together. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces all and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. What kingdoms is, is it going to consume? 
the kingdoms of the heathen age. And it ends with what? Esau's empire being dismantled. And this was and this will be the last time you ever see a kingdom rulership established on this planet Earth. Verse 45 says what? For as for as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, which represents our Lord Yahweh Shah, and that it break in pieces the iron. You see that? Which represents what? The Roman Empire, the brass, the Greek Empire. The clay, you see, the current empire that we're in right now, the silver and the gold, the uh, media Persian Empire and the Babylonian Empire, all this, all these heathen uh, uh, empires that was, was established on the earth, Yahweh Shah is coming to, to dismantle it all, man. There will be no accounts of the heathen kingdoms in the kingdom of heaven. All that history is going to be erased when Yahweh Shah returns. All these different structures, the pyramids, the leaning tower, Pisa, the fucking Eiffel Tower, everything having anything to do with a heathen empire is going to be completely erased once we come into power. To be never known again. Fucking Rome and the Colosseum, all that shit is going to be dismantled. Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai is about to hit the reset button on the planet Earth when he sends our Lord Yahweh Shai back, man. You see? It says what? The great power have made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain and the interpretation thereof sure. Meaning what is going to happen? You can put money on it. You can bet on it. It's going to happen. This is what Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is ordained to come to pass from the beginning. And that's what's being done right around you each and every day. It's another day closer to this prophecy being fulfilled. Ain't no Russians coming into power. Ain't no goddamn Chinese or Japanese or Ishmaelites coming into power because because that's what the heathen think. Everybody's uh, uh, trying to guess about what's going to happen next if, if America falls. Well, we're telling you straight up what it's going to be. Us so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we are coming into rulership as the Most High promised we would. That's what's about to happen. Let's jump to Daniel 7. Let's get Daniel 7, man. The throne of David is being reestablished in the earth, man. It says what? This is Daniel 7 and 13. It says what? I saw in the night visions and behold, one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him. Now, this is another cut to pagan Roman Catholic Christian doctrine where they say uh, Jesus Christ and God are the same being. No. They're two different beings, but they have the same mission. For the kingdom where it, for the, the, the kingdom to establish the kingdom will endure the righteousness upon this earth according to the most high's will. That's what that's what it means when it means they are one. They're on the same accord. And guess what? The true men of the Lord and the true believers, we're in we're in accordance with them, making us a part of that one. You see? Because we're all for the Most High's will being done on this earth. Right? Now what happens when, when Yahweh Shai go, went back before the Most High? Daniel 7 and 14 tells you that what? And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom. That all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. And his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Lining up with what the prophet Nathan gave unto David. Lining up with what the angel relayed to Mary in Luke chapter 1. Lining up to what's written in Jeremiah and in Isaiah. And all throughout the rest of the prophets man. It all lines up to what was written in the final vision. Given unto our forefather John on the Isle of Patmos. Yahweh shall return it and establish in the kingdom where it dwell of righteousness. According to the Most High's will. It all lines up. Now it goes on to say. To break down this vision. 
And it's similar to what? What we, what we just read in Daniel chapter 2. Daniel 7 and uh, 15, the vision interpreted. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near unto one of them that stood by. He went to an angel, right? And asked him the truth of all this. Hey, break it down to me. So it says what? So he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth for the four major heathen empires that the Most High ordained to come into power. That the Most High ordained the Israelites to go into slavery up under. The Babylonians, the Medio Persians, the Greek, the Roman, you see, empire. And we're living in what? What right now? The revival of the Roman Empire. That's why you see so many similarities between America and Rome. Rome is being re reincarnated in the earth through America, man. And this would be the final captivity that the nation of Israel would have to be saved from. Verse 18 says what? But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. Who are the saints of the Most High? The Israelites are the saints of the Most High, according to Psalms 50 and 5. Gather my saints together unto me that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Now, what nation of people did that? Only the Israelites, according to what? According to what's written in the book of Exodus, chapter 24, starting at verse 3. No other nation made a covenant with the Most High, so no other nation is a what? No other nation can be saints. So the saints or the Israelites of the Most High shall take the kingdom, which is what? The entire planet Earth, and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Because what? The kingdom that Yahweh is coming to establish, we're going to be made co-heirs with him in it. And just like his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, if we're co-heirs with him, that means our kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. That's why we're going to possess it forever, even forever and ever. That's what comes next. An everlasting kingdom where and dwell of righteousness, where the laws, statutes, and commandments are going to be upheld to the utmost. We're going to rule in righteousness. This is what's coming next, man. And we will never see the earth in this type of condition that we see it in up under these fucking heathen. Especially how the earth is completely corroded up under Esau. It will never be in this condition ever again. You see? <laughs> This is what's about to happen according to the Most High's vision. According to what the Most High intends to do. You see? As he is ordained it to be from the beginning. It was always going to be this way. So now, since we understand that, matter of fact, let's get Jeremiah 32 and 1. Or was it 31 and 32? Isaiah 32 Yup It says what Behold a king shall reign in righteousness And princes shall rule in judgment That's what's coming <laughs> This is what's coming according to the Most High's will That kingdom will dwell of righteousness The throne of David being reestablished That's what this, this That's what this whole thing is all about You see, everything, Yahweh Shah is coming to put everything back in order up under the Most High, and we're going to rule it in righteousness. You see, that's what's happening. So let's show you this as well. Isaiah, no, Jeremiah 23 and 5. <laughs> Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. That I will raise unto David a righteous branch, which is our Lord Yahweh Shai. And a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. This is what Yahweh Shai is coming to set up. You see? And he's going to have his 144,000 men right hey, beside him helping get this, this earth back in the right condition. He's going to have his 144,000 beside him. To govern the world in righteousness.
Because that's how the most I intended the planet to be ran. You see? So let's show you what it's all going back to. This is what the throne of David is, man. Look at that. The most high is universal reign. And there's so many other scriptures we can get. We can get Revelation uh, uh, 19. We can get 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starting at verse 24. We can, uh, 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 it, it, uh, it's all going into what? Yahweh shall returning to establish the throne of David in righteousness. Bringing the Israelites, the remnant of Israel with them to fulfill the promises and oath made unto our forefather Abraham. It's, it's all happening according to what the Most High intended it to be from the beginning, man. He's about to set his people up on the earth to rule with this righteous, with these righteous laws, statutes, and commandments as he intended us to do from the beginning. This is what the Israelites are for the Most High on the earth. The Most High set us up as his special people and gave us his laws, statutes, and commandments to govern the world with. To show, the, to show you heathen nations how to, to live in righteousness. And this is what it's going back to. With the establishment, the re-establishment of the throne of David in the earth. So Isaiah 2, and uh, Isaiah chapter 2 verse 1, it says what? The word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days. That the mountain of Yahweh's house, the government of Israel shall be established in the top of the mountains. The government of Israel, led by our Lord Yahweh Shai, is going to be what? The supreme government on this planet Earth. You see? Reign is having complete dominion over everything. It says what? And shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh shall from Jerusalem. This is what's about to be established in the earth. You heathen nations are going to come up to our land, the land of Israel, to learn the righteous way from the priest of the Almighty God, Yahweh. You see? Under the order of Melchizedek. You see that? You're going to learn. how You're going to come to us to learn how to govern yourself according to what's right. You're going to come to us to learn how to eat according to what's right. How to make your garments according to what's right. You see? You're going to, you're going to uphold these laws, statutes, and commandments. To the best of your ability, and they will be uh, they will be enforced to the utmost. So you won't see any madness uh, going on like you see going on right now up on the Esau's wicked rulership, where people just have liberty to do whatever they want to do. That's not finna happen. Yeah, you won't see people be, being able to destroy themselves with over much liberty in the kingdom of heaven because it's gonna be regulated according to the law, statutes, and commandments, the righteous way, and with that. And with that uh, standard being enforced to the fullest, it's going to cause life to flourish. It's going to cause everything to operate in its proper order according to how the most I intended it to be from the beginning. You see? This is what's coming. And it's, and it's the best thing for everything in creation. You see? There will be no need for GMOs in the kingdom. Ain't going to be no confusion about what man and woman is in the kingdom. You see? <laughs> see, that's confusion. That was allowed to run rampant up on the Esau. It won't be that way in the kingdom of heaven, man. You heathen are going to be showed the light. And how to conduct yourself the proper way. And you're going to love us for it. So that's what's about to be done. This is what everything is leading to. We're going to be ushered out of this age of wickedness that we've witnessed up under these heathen. And we're going to be ushered into an age of righteousness under our Lord Yahweh Shah. With the reestablishment of the throne of David and the planet Earth.
That's what's coming. Verse 4 says what? And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Ain't gonna be no more senseless wars on the earth, man. Ain't gonna be no need for it. Yahweh Shah is about to usher in the age of peace. You see, for the Israelites first and foremost, and then after 1,000 years of hardcore chattel slavery for you heathen nations, you'll be able to enjoy a earth <laughs> where indwelleth righteousness. And you're going to love it. You're going to love it. You're going to love to be a part of our work workforce, to work in our kitchens and to, and to, uh, to, to uh, upkeep our gardens and plow our vineyards or whatever else, whatever else we're going to have you doing. You're going to love to have it so. But this is what's coming. This is what happens next. So I ain't no need to ask what next or, uh, you know, who's the next in rulership. All these questions, we, we've answered all these things through the Holy Spirit. We've told you exactly what it's going to be according to the Most High's will. And that is what's going to be done. Whether you believe it or not. You see? And we're going to continue to reiterate these things and go into these prophecies over and over and over again. Until everything comes to pass according to the Most High's will. You see? But that's <laughs> that's it, man. We're a through the spirit and power how about Shemia was shy. A righteous kingdom is, is, is being ushered in, man. Thus saith the Bible, thus saith Yahweh about Shemi Awa Shah. And so with that, I'm gonna end it by giving all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah. And a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful of the out there. Pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah has created us to do. With that, I'm gonna say Shalom. Wa. Ba ba ba.